Hello everybody, this is Justina with Justina Tea Handmade. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to create uh, this fun little project. This is a little piggy bank. It looks like nothing from the front, but on the back it has a secret opening uh, where you can stash uh, your extra cash. Uh, I created it as a little uh, wall hanging. You can have it next to your desk, next to your crafting area to remind you uh, to put some extra cash away uh, to buy supplies for your next uh, crafting project. Uh, this is one of my existing uh, patterns and it can be purchased on Etsy. The link to the pattern is in the description box below. Uh, you can get this pattern at a discount uh, if you join my Facebook group or if you're already a member. So just make sure to visit Facebook group to make sure you have the discount code and uh, the discount code will be active uh, for one week from the premiere of this video. I hope you are uh, going to like this video and you're going to consider subscribing. So make sure um, if at any point you enjoy my tutorial to hit the subscribe button and to give the video a like. And now, if you would like to see how this little project comes together, please keep watching. To start our project, we're going to prepare all our uh, pattern pieces and our supplies. Um, we're going to cut out the two um, main outer panels. You just want to make sure you cut them out on mirror. You're going to have two uh, interfacing panels also cut on mirror and they are smaller uh, by the seam allowances than the outer panels. Also, you're going to have two lining panels and on one you're going to mark uh, the zipper opening from the printable pattern piece. You're just going to transfer that. Uh, you're going to cut a strap for our little top and tail of the piggy and a piece of zipper. So that's all our uh, cuts. Uh, obviously we will need some thread. I'm going to be using uh, Gutenman Mera 70 poly thread for this project uh, and uh, my needle size is 1070. So first of all, we have to fuse our interfacing to our outer panels. So take your pressing mat, one of the outer panels and making sure you are using the correct uh, interfacing panel with your outer panel. You just wanna make sure that the glue side is down on the wrong side of the fabric. You wanna center it so you have uh, seam allowances exposed and fuse the a fusible fleece to your fabric. Now that you have the outer panel uh, prepped like this with the uh, interfacing fused, you're gonna take one of the uh, lining panels that have the zipper opening marked and you're gonna center it on one of the outer panels. So you want both the outer panel and the lining panels to be right sides together and uh, the zipper opening mark to be visible. When you have that aligned, uh, you can use pins or clips to secure the fabrics. And now that you have this prepped, you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna sew along the zipper opening with the 2.5 stitch length making sure you are back stitching or overlapping the seams on the beginning and on the end of your seam. Now that you have your zipper opening sewn, you're gonna uh, make a cut in the middle, ending the cut with the little triangles on each short end uh, to be able to turn the lining 
to the wrong side of your outer panel. Uh, you can give the lining a little press so it folds inside easier. And now insert the lining through the cut opening. Make sure that the opening looks nice from the right side and give it a press. And now we're gonna attach our zipper inside of our opening. So take your zipper tape and just make sure you are keeping the direction of the, of the zipper pull in mind. Uh, I want it to be close uh, towards the snout of my piggy. So I'm just gonna position it this way. And I'm gonna use double-sided tape to help me keep the, uh, the zipper tape uh, in place while I'm sewing it on. So now I'm going to position the zipper tape inside of my opening. I want to make sure it's centered. Now that I'm happy with the position of my zipper, I'm going to take the project back to the machine and I'm going to top stitch around the zipper opening with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and you can use 2.5 or 3.5 stitch. Now that our zipper is attached, we're going to prep our tab and our tail. So you're going to take the strap that it's cut for um, to be used for the top and the tail. You're gonna uh, fold row edges to the inside and then fold it again and press well. When you have your panel prepped like this, you can use clips to hold the fold together. And now, when you have that ready, Take it to the machine and top stitch along those two long edges with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 or 3.5 stitch length. Now that I have my little strap ready, I'm gonna cut it in half. Use one part of it to create my little top on the top. Uh, on the pattern piece there will be a spot marked where you're supposed to attach it so you want to fold it over and secure it on the top also make sure you are only clipping it to the outer leave the lining out of the way and the same with your little tail so you want to refer to the uh, template for the placement of the little tail and secure that in place making sure your lining is out of the way and when you have that prepped uh, you're gonna take it back to the machine and you're gonna base both uh, to your outer panel only now that you have your uh, back outer panel prepped uh, we're gonna connect our two outer panels together first we want to make sure that our lining will stay out of the way of the seam so you want to fold it up you can use pins to keep the panel out of the way of the seam now you're gonna take the second outer panel and place both 
right sides together. Align the smaller elements first and clip. And when you have that done, you're gonna take your project back to the machine and you're gonna sew all around your project with the one fourth of an inch seam allowance. You wanna avoid sewing over the interfacing. So you wanna keep your stitch uh, on the fabric only and keep your seam allowance at one fourth of an inch. After your project is sewn all around, we're gonna now trim our seam allowances with pinking shears. If you don't have pinking shears, uh, just snip the seam allowances where the curvy parts are so our um, seam will be lying nicely when we turn our project right side out also clip all those little corners and the inside corners just snip it towards uh, the stitching Now, after we prepped our seam allowance, we can unfold our lining panel. Flatten it nicely. Take the other lining panel. Put both right sides together. And clip or pin all around. When you have those two panels pinned together, uh, mark an opening on the bottom to, to be left unsewn. And uh, now take it back to the machine and making sure your outer panel is out of the way of the seam. So all around up to the opening. So make sure you are leaving the opening unsewn. Uh, you can increase the seam allowance here to uh, 3 8 of an inch uh, and make sure to backstitch well in the beginning and on the end of the seam. So take it to the machine and sew the lining together. And now that you have the lining sewn and you have your opening left uh, unsewn, you're going to trim the seam allowances along the seam uh, with the pinking shears or just uh, trim it to one eighth of an inch uh, with regular uh, fabric uh, shears. Now uh, that the seam allowance is trimmed, I'm gonna open my zipper and turn the project right side out. Make sure you are happy with uh, the project, how the project looks like. Uh, before we're gonna give the project a nice final press, we're gonna finish the lining. So you wanna pull the lining out of your project. Finish 
fold the row edges inside. You can pin it or clip it. When you have your lining prepped like this, take it back to the machine and top stitch along the opening with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 stitch length. If you feel comfortable, you can decrease the seam allowance to 1 16th of inch. Now that you have your lining sewn, you can place it back inside of your project. Now make sure it's pushed out so it's nice and flat inside. Zip your zipper and now you can give the project a nice press. Now your project is almost completed. The last step is we're just gonna tie a knot on our little tail so it's nice and curly. You can trim the end and, less, and use a little bit of a permanent fabric bond to make sure your little end, uh, your little end of the tail is not gonna fray. And now your project is completed. The project is now completed. Your little uh, piggy bank zipper pouch is ready to use. It looks very innocent from the front, but on the back you have your secret opening for your secret stash of cash. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you're gonna give the project a go. If you do, please make sure to share it with me on my social media. Links to the Facebook group and to the Instagram are in the description box below. If you would like to be notified of a coming video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and to hit the notification button. Till the next time.